Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and today we are going to be reading some D&D &D horror stories. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. My first D&D &D session ever. Hello, I am new to Reddit, and I don't even know if this counts as a horror story, but lately I've been listening to a whole bunch of Crit Crab, Den of the Drake, and D&D Doge. They didn't mention a different YouTuber that I've been listening to a lot called Sir Nox, and he's going to be really sad about that. So I just wanted to share my worst story with the in the. I can look back and laugh on it, though, because how it played out was pretty funny. Sorry about length if you find it to be too long. It's actually short enough to fit in the video with four, or with three other posts, so it's fine. So this takes place about a decade and a half ago, 2009 or 2010. I was in my early teenage years, and I knew about D&D, as my father had played it. But I hadn't been introduced yet. I heard the game was all about telling a story and about imagination. And as a child that was around 11 or 12, I was excited to join and play a character. This consists of me, my uncle, my parents, a cousin or two, and a childhood neighbor as a DM. Rest in peace. They played a mixture of 1st and 2nd edition, I think. If not, it was definitely 1st edition. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember what class I was playing or what was going on in the campaign. I had just joined. I had some sort of ASG thing type Oops. as a kid and it was hard to sit there and listen for long periods of time. This affects my reading by my this affects reading by myself also. So I was pretty clueless of context and even how to play. I remember we were staying at my hunk, uncle's house. They had just entered the his dungeon. We made it to a wise blade hallway. Left or right? Which way do you want to go? Everyone debates amongst themselves, and I speak up. Well, I am left handed, so I want to go left. I kid you not, that was the reason. I believe everyone else had chosen right after I had said left, though again, the details are a little foggy. Okay, you see a room filled with three treasure chests. Which do you go for? Which do you first go for? Well, I chose left last time, so I'll go for the one on the right. The DM then rolled a d20, checked his notebook, and said, You look inside and you become petrified. Bruh. <laughs> like, no saving throw? What the heck? I don't know what that meant, so I asked, and it was explained to me that I was basically a statue at this point. I freaked out a little and asked if there was any way to reverse the situation. Everyone started looking through their character sheet, eat inventories, and nope. No one had a potion of greater restoration, and no way to heal me. So I had to sit out pretty much the entire session. And at the end, they thought the rumored Dungeons of Dragon. They fought the rumored Dragon of Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. That's actually kind of toxic. Honestly, I was a little disappointed. I would be too. But on the other hand, I believe I ended up watching Disney Channel, which I loved. But also, but during my uncle and aunt's house, I had, also had other things to do, such so as watch a whole bunch of Star Wars and, and Legos to play with. So it wasn't like I had absolutely nothing to do. Still... Petrifying a character with no saving throw on their own on their own own against it. I mean, sure, they might have been young. It still is a little bit toxic to me. <sighs> I played a time or two after, but I didn't play for quite a long time after that. But not for the reason you would think. It was also because when I sat there, I wouldn't really, I wasn't retaining information being given to me very well. I ended up being too distracted, and I eventually gave up trying. For me, it's just that I can't keep a consistent schedule for the life of me. 
Until I reached adulthood, I started reading it more often, my brain started retaining more information, and I became less distracted, I guess. I watched The Legend of Vox Machina and Critical Role, so I would see three if you were wondering, and Stranger Things, and I really wanted to try my hand at D&D again. That's my little brother's DM for me, and a couple of guys at work. Which is now down from four of us PCs to two of us. Long story, but not a horror story. Even though it's just two now, it's still going on almost three years later. We play fifth edition, which I find to be much simpler. Yeah, I think that the first editions were like known for being a little bit complicated. And also, let's be real. D&D is why there's like different damage types in a lot of video games and why crit hits and critical misses happen. Eventually I started playing in, in a campaign with my, my uncle was running when, and I, where I've been able to crack jokes about his, his story and it's been really fun as well. I even got a few of my friends to play D&D with my little brother as a DM as well. So I feel like it worked out pretty well. TLDR Dumb kid tries to play first edition D&D, gets fed fried and doesn't play for years because he has a hard time listening. Gets back into it but in adulthood because of a newfound love for TTRPGs. My first game was Pathfinder. It was really fun. Although, at the beginning of the game, I did get um, knocked out as in like, I passed out from a history check for five minutes. Which a lot of people are now telling me was actually not a good thing for a DM to do. And honestly, now I'm looking back at it, I would probably do something any more interesting, like, like insert wrong history or something like that. Like you remember everything wrong. You remember you got a uh, 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 died from um, a um, a mortal old blade or some, something. I don't know. Or was it a nature check? I can't remember. Anyway, now we have a short order one. The DM who hated paladins. Just a little contextualization. This was one of the first campaigns I played, and because of that, I didn't argue with my DM, who I, I will call R. I wanted to write other stories about him in the future. My friend and I started a campaign based on Diablo, so we joined and created our classes, our characters. I mean, I created one Jack Ragnarton Paladin and my two friends a Bard and a Fighter. He then said he couldn't make it to Paladin, so we started our journey. Everything was pretty normal until level 3. My friends chose their subclasses, and when I would pick mine, I said, In my scenarios, Paladins have to make their oath in front of a religious authority, such as a priest, to take a, the subclass. That annoyed me a little, but I kept playing the game. How much time would uh, take us to encounter a priest, after all? The whole party was level 5, and I was playing a paladin with no subclass because of R. We were in a dungeon, fighting a boss to save the freaking priest, and the party died with me being the only survivor. I saved the priest as, as to have him tell me that I'm the oaths and you have to find another priest in the other city. You don't know how much I wanted to strangle my DM as the NPC said that. My friend, my, my friends made other characters, but they didn't join me, so I was solo and died to a golem made of gold on my way back to another city. I quit, and the campaign didn't have any other sessions. Now, one piece of advice: as now I am an experienced demon player, or at the same time, DMs, if you don't want a class in your campaign because you think they are OP or don't mix with the scenario, inform your players about that and don't punish them for free. This is my first post here, but looking forward to post more of my experiences with you. See you later. Amazing. And yes, what else you said is correct. If you don't like a class, don't have it in your game. If you don't like um, a certain race of characters, and I mean like D&D race, not like skin color race. I guess... Some D in your races seem to be based on skin colors. Now that's a different discussion. If you don't like a certain kind of character or dynamic or something, 
Make a clue to your players so they can uh, and avoid it. Like, first rule of D&D is communication. Like, if you don't want your players to commit war crimes, tell them. <sighs> this is my first time actually ever posting. This one is the one that, that, depending on how long it takes me to read it, will decide if I actually read that fourth one or just give up on it until next time. I've been using any TTRPG horror stories as a guide and to help me avoid bad groups as best as I can. However, it seems my luck ran out. Though not as terrible as my stories, I was improving of how this game was running. Considering a couple of other people bailed on the campaign shortly before I did, at least I wasn't alone on this belt. And yet despite you, despite I this story not being as bad as others, it is a lot longer than a lot of posts that I've seen here. I am going to complain about this a lot. This was almost a year ago now. For sake of amenity, I refer to who they are just by their class, including the Dungeon Master. The setting was slightly modified in of the Apocalypse campaign of 5th edition. I was pretty excited. And tonight, I never actually played in many official campaign settings before. And I heard good things about this one. The DM himself was a pretty nice guy. A little harsh on the rules, if you forgot, he will definitely remind you. There were six of us, including the Dungeon Master. For the sake of ease, we will name people based off their class. We have myself as a bard. A fighter who was very into role play and was a very fun person to play with. A wizard who was way into trying to start their own business for some reason in this campaign. Our star druid who would that would take upwards of up to ten minutes to turn in combat. That's a whole nother can of worms. Lastly, our our barbarian, who unfortunately got shafted probably the worst in this. Things started off well enough, with everyone having a low mini 10 minute into their characters pass that leads them to why we will end up in the same town to begin our adventure. For the first hour or so, everything is going great, just a lot of great role playing from everyone involved, and, and generally a good time. Now, this is where things kind of start going downhill. For the supposedly role play, in heavy campaign, I thought everyone was on board for it, except the Dungeon Master, it seemed. I guess it's the easiest way for me to kind of break down how it went into how each session went. Mind you, the sessions were about 3 hours apiece, and we met every week, and there were was maybe 30 minutes of roleplay in the rest of combat. There were 9 sessions of this before we called it quits. I'm gonna take a drink here, hang on. This is gonna be a long post. Session 1. When we were inside the town enjoying our time, I am giant bugs first out of the ground and then arrived out the village. I nearly took out my bard and the wizard. We have a long rest after we survived barely just to be attacked by a pack of goblins and the fall more and they decide to raid the new town. Session 2. Our fire nearly gets mauled to death by gnolls that were apparently working with the goblins, and they were mad that we killed the goblins in self-defense and defense of the town. Then helped that uh, they were also working with bugbear assassins that attacked us in our sleep and nearly killed the barbarian. Session 3. Making our way north from this town, we get attacked by another pack of gnolls. Then mid Alambed, apparently a group of griffin riders swooped down and helped us in the its encounter, which I was grateful for. Though apparently one of the writers didn't trust the barbarian, so he tried to kill the barbarian on the spot. Thankfully, we managed to knock out that writer and get the other ones to back off. This is when the DM introduces a super cool captain of the Griffin Riders. Totally not a self insert. Session 4 That following night after the Griffin Rider is, is we are in the middle of a long rest, and guess what? More damn goblins attack us in our sleep. Our druid nearly dies, and I almost die again. Session 5, when things really go bad. 
There's no time for rope flying in this one, it's strictly combat. Our party gets jumped by six months that can also cast Thunder Wave and Shatter for whatever reason. Unfortunately, my Bahrain friend and my bard as well ultimately do not make it through this fight. Also to rub dirt in our eyes, the monks also captured our fighter and took them hostage. Session 6, we learn that the fighter is currently being tortured, and the longer we take to rescue the fighter, their maximum HP is being permanently reduced. So we are now on a ticking clock to find where they were taken off to. So the fighter and the barbarian are basically sitting on their hands from this point forward. The two survivors, the druid and the wizard, manage to drag themselves to the nearest town. <sighs> oh, by the way, this was only the third town that we managed to make it to, since combat took most of the travel time. Oh, you thought there wasn't combat for session 6? Just kidding. My character, a cleric slash childhood friend of the wizard, was brought into the fold. Just that my character er, er, currently being attacked by four gang members trying to rob me with no info of my own about how this was going to be my introduction to this group with my character. Session 7, a hitman that was apparently hired to go after my bard knew that I was traveling with a group of adventurers, even though we've never had time to actually talk to anyone. Aside from my character's mother, no one knew who my bard actually was. He still attacks the party anyway, and he's despite my bard being nowhere and left to let it alone alive. Very scripting out of that one, thank god for me playing it like Flake, or we would have more dead PCs on our hands. Session 8, we managed to get information out of the hunter that was after my bard, about where the fighter is. On our way there, two different raiding parties from the tower were basically standing guard in the middle of the forest. Despite us making the stealth checks, all of us making our rules above 18 on average, whatever, at this point I can tell most people are getting ready to check out, and I think I've checked out about 3 sessions ago. Season 9 and the finale! We finally get to the tower. For some reason, the captain of the group of the Griffin Riders was there, waiting for us. There are only a few guards left in this tower. After we raided with the captain's help, we managed to dispatch a pet manticore that the monks apparently just had in their back pocket. Finally, we met with our fighter friend and once again freed them from captivity. Just before or we were finally ready to get the plot back on track, which I'm not even sure there was one at this point, the captain started laughing rather maniacally. Spoiler warning, turns out the captain was secretly evil. The session ends as the DM is laughing at the ca captain as even more of these monks and two more manticores cut him out of a hidden wall in this tower. Just to stare down our party, telling us how we are going to make worthy sacrifices. I feel like I should have asked something sooner, so during the weekend between sessions 9 and session 10, that's never come, I just saw a general question out to the Discord that we are playing across. So, what happened to the Barbarian? So yeah, when I said the Barbarian was sitting on his hands when he was sitting there for four, four whole sessions, waiting to introduce this new character, being able to do nothing, he got tired of it and left. Then we spoke up, mentioning the Barbarian got bored. The Druid piped in with their own question. I don't want to sound grateful, but... When is the actual role-playing part of this game going to happen? The fighter and myself piped up in agreement. Of course, the DM was not happy that everyone seemed that they weren't having fun. The DM even went on record and said, I'm sorry, you guys think there's this much combat? Uh, there's a lot of encounters you guys are not doing since I don't want to bog it down. I don't know where his logic was, but having one of the players quit without saying anything was not a good sign. It finally took someone to actually say it for everyone else to take a hard look at how this has been going. About three days before session 10, I started Discord. Before session 10, and sorry, Discord was closed and I was blocked by the Dungeon Master. The fighter and I still talk occasionally. They too were also blocked, however the rest of us kind of went our separate ways. I was sad to see, see the Barbarian go. I really want to be apologize on behalf of the DM for not letting them introduce his new character. Really wasn't sorry and appropriate for the Barbarian to introduce his new character yet. Try telling that to the guy that 
as to sit on his hands for four sessions. See how well that works. Honestly, I kind of like how this campaign was going when it wasn't combat. Which was unfortunately 87% of this campaign. Maybe in the future DM will make another campaign and maybe put a bit more emphasis on role playing in this role playing game. TLDR Battle Junkie the Dungeon Master kind of kills the mood for everyone and silently cancels the campaign. I think we have time for that last story, probably. If my computer can stop blinding me for a minute, thank you. <sighs> First time DM and their problem player. So I got into D and D and school and decided I tried making my own campaign. I was really bad at it and had no structure, but I was doing my best. In comes H. He wants to be a player. I was like, okay, but I give it give some get round of rules. Don't split the party. Don't attack party members. Be reasonable with me since it's my first time DMing. Don't just kill your character because you're bored of them. So, the game starts. We have an interesting quartet starting their journey, and I got feedback on how to make the story more engaging. And the party sets up. First thing H does, uh, as, as I said, he has an NPC, he has character, so he can create a new one. After a while of arguing, I decide, fine, but I'm going to give you drawbacks because I gave you clear rules. He is unhappy his actions have consequences, because those aren't consequences. The consequences are, okay, you're done playing with uh, with the uh, uh, group, get out. That's consequences. This is just a slap on the wrist. Party arrives at a plot point and starts a journey. Turns out H wants to be let his character have a dog. I say whatever. It's going to be a Saint Bernard who likes hugs. He says no, the dog is a blink dog. I'm getting aggravated at this point, and again I agree to continue the story. Again warning him that if he does this again, I will punish him. Why not just kick him if he does it again? I started my first combat, and it was pretty fun in my opinion. After that, H decided he doesn't want the money of fame. I offered the party, and he wants to be a mercenary. Strike 3, H. No heart, old spire. H goes to the tavern to and asks for work. Tavern Eve says that he doesn't have anything, but if H is looking for a job, he can help clean the building until something rolls in. H takes offense to this and tries to take the tavern to keep with his maw. The bartender casually swallows the maw into a black hole and says that it's going on H's tab. I mentioned that this land is full of very dangerous people. If you want to survive, you have to be strong. Anyway, what was H's next move? Well, punch guy who just destroyed his only weapon with a black hole. I decided to disregard physics again and say that where his hand and is now a black hole and the stump is cleanly cut. Tavern keeps set as he ain't getting that back. H now fist strike as is right to Tavern. Tavern keeps his not amused and stops his rampage. He took his other hand as well. H clay um down and asks for some money. Tavern keep is annoyed and says that money isn't free. If you want money, you gotta give me something in return. Collateral and all that. That's a nice looking dog. I'd buy him off ya. Minus the property damage causes. The costs. At this point, H is so pissed that he isn't getting his way. He goes and gets his mom to be even because she's in charge of the clubs at the school. Apparently, I'm not playing fair. I sent Furman saying that I'm trying to play a game I've never played before. 
DMing. I played D&D, &D, just not a DM. And her son broke every rule I tried to put in place. But no, her golden child can do no wrong. Either way, that campaign didn't last long after that because of various reasons, including that. And I decided to put more effort into world, world building and story. Now I have one of my previous parties to be joining in for a retry of, at the story. Once I finish it. Oops. And I guess I made a little bit of info. H's first character was an interesting character that outside his former site and plot for. One day, around session 3, he came up to me and asked if he could kill off his character to play a new one. I said no, he chose to do it anyway, despite how much I tried saying no. He ended up being so annoying that I decided, fine, you want to kill your character to play a broken, powerful character who has no heart in his creation? Okay, but your character will have a natural minus 2 to, with wisdom and intelligence. It will also have no homebrew magic. I know, dumb idea to have homebrew magic in my first campaign. He kept pushing me in every little aspect of the story while I was just trying to make the story fun. Throughout the story in Hage's Rampage, I tried to save a firm but decided to get Evan to just continue the story. But he always gave consequences I felt were fair. He didn't have a reason to follow the story. Money and being seen as a worldwide hero. He wants to go to character. Okay, your character will be weak. Maybe you can and catch back up if you behave. So he wants to leave the party in the middle of combat to go do your own thing. Okay. You guys chose to go to a very dangerous country to get info. Displaying off the main path will lead you to lead to you ending up in a situation that's a way higher level than you can face. I had tried to do my my best to get the story back on track despite his railroading. You mean he wasn't railroading, dude. Eventually, the other players started complaining about H's behavior, so I had to do something. One last little for this added. I was around 15 at the time this was happening. I had played D&D &D twice before and wanted to start see what DMing was like. H did not make it easy. Clearly. Gosh. Okay. That was i slash dnd horror stories so if you like this video please leave a like on the video comment down below and subscribe to the channel i have no idea what i'm going to be doing tomorrow so until then goodbye